What's going on, YouTube? Um, it's your boy Humble Warrior checking in. Um, so I did some in-depth thinking from yesterday about uh, the topic, the topic that I'm going to speak on, in reference to um, black men. Um, I think there's a big misconception about um, being inferior to other races and trying to find our footing in what we consider um, the hard knock life. Um, so to give a brief overview of uh, our stance or where we came from, of course, you know, we we dealt with slavery, you know, the 300 year, 400 year um, ordeal. And from that, um, it brought a sense of unity, a sense of pride. Uh, we were looking at brighter days and we were not so much focused on the negative or the present current state of what we were dealing with, but we were more so looking toward the future, what was coming, what was coming over the hill, even if those who were living at that time were not gonna be able to see it, they still looked at it as, well, by me dealing with this, then the person behind me won't have to, won't have to endure the same fate. So fast forward, you know, 100 years, um, came to America, um, we started to immigrate from the South to head up North to the Midwest, to the West Coast, to get better jobs, to, earn a piece of the quote-unquote American pie and to staple our name in, into this economy. Well, if you look at everything that has been invented from the traffic light to the waffle iron to the iron to the rake to the broom to the trash can to any pretty much appliance that you use, at one point in time, it, it did come from the idea or the mindset of a black man. Um, not to the great other races, but um, as I was explaining to a friend of mine the other day, um, white people in general, although they did not create things, they did um, intelligently find ways to market it, find ways to put it out there and stamp their name on it and to make it available to the public. Um, whereas whatever was invented by whichever black man that did invent it, I don't think he saw the concept of everyone probably using it but I think he had a common use for what his creation would be created for. Um, for instance, the automobile, the first design was uh, was actually by a black man. And then of course Ford and you know Chevrolet and other big name companies took it and you know, they built their own version and you know, they put out cars and became you know rich off the ideas. Um, and it's not to tear down what he did, but I mean, if it was not for his idea, who knows what it, if we ever, if we actually would even have automobiles. But I said that to say this: um, we as a people, or we as black men, are a staple front to this country. Don't always seem like it, but we are. Um, we have laid a very strong foundation to what it should be even though I think people like uh, Minister Farrakhan um, who derives this thought that God intended for blacks to rule over everyone that isn't true there's nowhere in the Bible that states that nowhere in fact uh, God intended for man to rule the earth it didn't say a color and when Jesus would put, um, when Jesus was on earth himself, he didn't, he did not specify um, people of color. He said that the Jews, that the Jews were his uh, chosen people. That does not mean that it derived from black people. It's just what Jesus himself said. So um, I guess it's a misconception because of what we have to endure and what we have dealt with over the course of you know four or five hundred years 
but at some point we have to plot a different course to take um i think that um i really feel that um a lot of us um myself included use excuses or we downplay our abilities to you know make a better lives for ourselves or to even go out there and put out ideas that you know may benefit not only ourselves but the general population i think that we settle um when we don't have to um it's obvious that we we make a lot of um excuses to the point to where it becomes a habit and we instill that same habit in our children and thus the cycle continues um especially when it comes to the drug empire and stuff like that we make it we have basically set up areas like projects and stuff like that to where it is a hyenas to get out of it's like a prison you know we are the guards that guard each other to keep um ourselves in check so for me i find it you know very odd that a lot of us take the time to tear each other down um, for no reason at all sometimes I, I get we do get angry you know we do get frustrated with each other we lie to each other we steal from each other and ultimately we end up you know killing ourselves or killing our fellow man because of whatever issue we may have with them nine out of ten it can be resolved by simply just talking and coming to an understanding and if you can't come to the understanding you know mutually then it's best to part ways but at some point in time, come back to revisit a conversation to fix things. That's how things get resolved. It doesn't get resolved by you putting it off and pondering on it for years and years and years. Only to come back and, you know, do something drastic because you felt like it was the, the only option you had. Which is why prisons today again are overpacked. Majority of the prisons in America, you know, a good majority are African American. They got, you know, there are, you know, the uh, Dominican Republic, Mexicans and stuff like that. But, I mean, truth be told, most of it is, is black. You know, one, for one reason or another, prisons are like arenas. We just fill them up. And that has to stop. You know, it doesn't benefit us or our children if, we, if we're sitting behind a 6 by 10 cell and all we can do is collect call you every now and then and, you know, say we love you from a distance. Or write you a letter saying how sorry we are or I wish we could change this or change that. When in actuality we had a choice in the beginning. Now you know people may say, Oh well they were, you know, shooting at me or I did this for my homie or whoever the case may be. But at the end of the day, are you really helping your homie out if you kill somebody else? I mean he's already dead, so what good is it gonna do for you to take a life on behalf of his? You just sent that person to the afterlife just like that of your homeboy it doesn't make any sense and then you go into prison for the rest of your life so you know to me i just i kind of need us to wake up and tap into our real potential not to not to rap you know if that's a talent then yes expose that talent but every young black person doesn't have to be a rapper doesn't have to be a singer Hell, for that matter, you ain't got to be an athlete all the time because I, I see that stigma a whole lot. It's the, um, it's like a play, you know. A lot of us try to go out to sports for whatever reason. It could just be to get away from life. But we use that as an anchor to get to the means of being successful. There's so many different variables and angles to get to success. It's ridiculous. But for some reason, we narrow the gap. I just think it's all about sports and entertainment. That's the way America has set it up. That's not the way to be successful. Sometimes success is simply having a home that you own and raising your kids and realizing that they stand out of trouble. And that you actually have the necessities to live and to be happy within yourself. That's success. It has nothing to do with your bank account. Even though 95, maybe 97% of us would beg to differ. Because as the Bible states, money is the root to all kinds of evil. And it really is. There's no doubt about that. But it also gives you this sense of an empowerment that many people feel like if you don't have a certain 
amount of zeros in your account, then I mean you, you're basically saying you're nothing. And because celebrities have so many assets or so many um, dollar signs behind them, we almost contrary them to that of idols. Uh, look at Michael Jordan. Look at um, LeBron James, uh, Dwayne Wade, um, James Harden, uh, Andre Tacumpo, um, even Magic. You know Isaiah. All these past and present African American phenoms. You know we raised them to the status of that of God. And at the end of the day, before they even picked up the basketball, they were right where we were at one point in time or another. The only difference was they harnessed their craft and improved on it, and they used sports as a mechanism to get to the next level. I'm telling you that you can do the same thing even outside of sports or music. If your gift is intelligence, then you need to be in the forefront of building your network to where you can come out with the next business idea or the next franchise or building or company or whatever to where people were utilizing your services but don't take that in a sense to where you feel like you are devout and you can just step on people that you want to step on to get where you want to go because there's an old saying the same people you, the same people that you see coming up you do see them coming down and that's a true statement so be mindful of who's next you stepping on because those are the same ones that's going to lift you but those also will be the same ones that step away and you will fall. You know, because God does send wake-up calls to you. It's up to you to answer, but he does send them. And I guess another point that I would like to make is that um, I feel as though, you know, this whole police brutality thing I don't condone it. I don't. But I will say this. Um, those officers, the one or two out of every department that you may see that have committed a, a heinous crime or, or did whatever, um, they are also human as well. Now, we, don't, we have no idea what goes into the course of a day with a cop. We don't know. But from what social media and other outlets put out, they only show that one clip of what the officer did to the person. Most times, the, most videos I've seen, when a cop pulls somebody over there, you know, they say, oh, I know my rights, you know, according to this, 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 and this, you know, you can't do this and this and this. And of course the cop, out of response, is stunned because most citizens don't know the law like that. For the ones who do, I applaud you. But my tactic, what I do, because I haven't been pulled over in nearly five years, thank God. But I just have a calm demeanor. I have no time to sit and go back and forth arguing about why I got pulled over. If I did something wrong, getting pulled over for it, I mean, it's just what it is. I just take take and keep moving. It doesn't require me to take a bullet or to record myself going back and forth with the officer to ask him for his badge number and tell him, you know, that you'll basically be taking his job and all that kind of stuff. That is unnecessary. Doesn't have to be broadcast, doesn't have to be put out there for the whole world to see the comment on it and say, oh, well, this is the injustice that we continue to suffer. Most times, or sometimes rather, sometimes it's best to just comply. You don't have to have an attitude because you get pulled over. Because what purpose do police serve? If they're not there to do their job, then they don't need to be in uniform. Same as in the military, we serve a purpose. We may not always like it, because I know I don't, but I still have a purpose. You know, I don't like all the orders being given or whatever, but regardless, I still serve a purpose. And if if I was told to go, you know, go into this person's house or whatever, I don't know the reasoning, but at least I will, you know, comply with trying to reason with the person before I have to go do my job. You know, I'm not there to go back and forth having a shout message you. Because my superiors may say, you know, use lethal force as necessary. To me, that's never necessary unless the person is actually shooting back at you. 
that's it. You know, if you shoot back, I'm gonna shoot back at you because I'm trying to get to my house, back to my family. But outside of that, there's no reason to become the next um, fallen celebrity. Because people like George Floyd, I mean, what happened to him was egregious. But I feel like the ones, the bystanders that were sitting there recording it, if you were so egregious by what was happening, you could have did your best to try to stop it. It's a, it was a bunch of people in that video walking around watching him take his last breath while the man put a knee on his neck. Now, I didn't say it would be easy to stop him, but at least you could have made the effort to do so. There's another father gone, another son taken from his parents, and all they did was, you know, make a TV um, memorial. I'm not gonna say marker because it wasn't, but they made a, a circus of it for, you know, almost two weeks. He got, his family got a lot of money and love and support, but the purpose behind it was only to highlight what had been going on for years. And to me, I'm like, even with the riots of, um, I believe it was uh, 62, I believe, or I believe it was 62. But the LA riots and then the riots, even the riots of this year, um, I think if you're gonna protest and have a cause behind it, because the police brutality thing, yes, that had a purpose. But once the people got, you know, charged and got put behind bars, there's no point in calling for the police departments to be shut down, pointless. But let me not get off into that because I was talking about black men. So we, as black men, you know, I feel like it's time for us to, to step up and stand on this mantle that we've been put on. You know, um, I don't think a lot of us realize the impact we have. I think that we use our given gifts in our youth, but then once, for whatever reason, once it's taken, we tend to settle for what life throws at us, whether it be, you know, a, a regular nine to five job that we really don't like, but we just do it because we get a check or, you know, selling drugs or, you know, gang banging or whatever. You know, I feel like we could, we could actually stand up and hold positions in better places. But because of fear or, or because of the derived of failure, um, we choose to stand back and let our counterparts do that. Um, we are more, we are more competent to be told them what to do than to actually give orders. Um, I think that a lot of times we, I'm not gonna say we fold, but we do tend to, to blend in with the crowd when it comes to being heard and you know you have your you know Martin Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and people like that but I mean to me the average everyday working man could can make the same impact and it starts at home you know you have to get your your home together that don't mean you know by any means necessary that you go do what you gotta do take care of your family no because if you're selling drugs in your community, who are you really helping? You know, you, you watching the destruction that you're putting out there, killing other people, wrecking their lives, and all you're saying is, well, it's about the dollar. Is it really about the dollar? Because that same dollar will get you killed down the road behind somebody else of the same color who's looking to take over what you've already established, which is basically meteor or next to nothing. And as I said yesterday to another, to the same friend, the same energy and effort that's put into um, running the drug empire can be literally put into establishing a legit business and not no BS barbershop and nothing like that. A legitimate business that put out products that people would love to buy, that you can market, that you can, you know, that you can actually 
upgrade and advance for years to come. And you can set that mark today. I mean, it, all it takes is one flick of, the, of the, the switch in your brain to make that happen. But for some reason, you know, I guess the mere fact that we see the product going out, which is quote unquote the drugs and stuff like that. Um, we're okay with, you know, just being down to this level when it's not okay. And it never makes any sense. Because we're, we're not an inferior race. We're not lesser than other people. We just have the hardest time of grasping our place in this world. And to me, I mean, we have just as much to offer as anybody else. Probably more. I mean, if you look around, most people, you know, copy our image, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress, what we say, our little slang words that we throw at each other, whatever. And they think, you know, that it's acceptable because we accept that same um, behavior. We not, well, I'm not gonna say all of us, but some people, the great, you know, black women and, you know, and songs and all kinds of stuff. And they, they put that image out to where it's okay to, to call her a thought or a bitch or whatever, you know, because to her it's funny. There's nothing funny about being a female dog period but because men have set that trend other people are not going to respect it they're just not and then you know some people do get mad when they see black women go off and date outside of the race but what have we really given them to hold on to unemployment you know poverty barely living above you know floating water so we have to wake up we got to do better and uh, I get tired of hearing well you know the white man hasn't done this and the white man hasn't done that quite frankly it's not up to the white man quite frankly it's not because the same energy and effort he took and taking over a business to, to expand it and make it bigger I'm pretty sure most of the most of the men that's working there that's of color have millions of ideas of how they can improve the company because they see how it's being ran and nine out of ten they don't like it they find little bitty stuff that they can improve on that they that they know would actually help things get better but do they say anything no because they're still gonna check that's signed by somebody else so they choose to be quiet and they hide behind this stigma that, you know, oh, well, nobody's going to listen to me because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a janitor or I just or I just sit in the board meeting just to take notes or whatever. You know, regardless of what your position is, you, you can still upgrade, you can still improve. So... I just find it odd, you know, that that we as men continue to, you know, beat ourselves over, over stuff. I mean, I I do it from time to time, but it's just like at some point we gotta snap out of it because all we're doing is passing that behavior down to our kids. And at some point somebody has to cut the cord because the disconnect came in my opinion, disconnect came from the 1970s when they basically f removed black men out of the picture forcefully through drugs, through violence, through military, whatever whatever excuse you want to use. They, they were removed from the home, and now you see the result. You see it. Chicago, 
need I say more, you know, one of the ruthless cities in America. But had they had this, the stable environment to actually thrive in, then it wouldn't be much of a conversation to be had about the murders. But this is all a derived plan to keep us from thriving. Because we have, we have a lot to offer outside of what we already done. I know I'm talking about on TV. Don't let people like Steve Harvey and stuff like that. They are great people. But are they really going to help you do a lot? You know, can they really sit there and tell you, you know, well, um, you should do this or you should do that. Like, they, they, their livelihood depends on you being able to tune in to what they have to say. Whether it's good or bad. Tyler Perry's the same way. And I have nothing against Tyler. At all. But men like him, Steve, um, Michael, um, I just feel like their their influence is to the point of where they can reach almost anybody. But they do not even attempt to. I get it. You know, they feel like you know, most people ask you for the money. So, I go in the morning, but sorry about that. But, um, to me, I feel like, you know, we have to be accounted. We have to be accountable for what we decide to do. And if we want to leave the ones we love behind, but nothing, then I mean, let's continue to sit on our ass what we've been doing. Because the handout phase has to go away. It used to be a time where black men stood up and they took initiative and they took pride in being able to say that they did what they had to do for the family to eat. Whether they whether they got a plate or not, they still put enough in the house for the kids and the, and the wife to eat. And why I'm saying it, let me say this to my black women. It matters about you being supportive. You know, I get it. You know, you guys say um, men are dogs, they lie, whatever, whatever. But we did come from women, even though originally they came from us. So if you teach young boys how to lie, how to do this, how to do that, you can't be mad at them for giving you exactly what you're giving them. And you also can't, you know, you can't basically drain a man dry and then expect him to still, you know, reciprocate that love and that affection and stuff like that for you. Because he needs to, he needs that touch. He needs that. He needs to know that he's appreciated. He needs to hear it. Father's Day, you know, Valentine's Day, shit like that. Those holidays are just meant to be a distraction he needs to hear it because it does matter it's, it's his job to go out there and beat the pavement that's his job so if he if he walks out the door every day with the thought in the back of his head well why am I doing this for then he's already lost the battle before he even walked out there help him win in the home and then he'll be a bigger winner outside you know don't give him a reason to start looking around for somebody else to do your job for you. Cause, you know, we've had this we've had this whole I guess pandemic or no not pandemic, but epicenter about trust and being able to trust people, stuff like that. But trust is essential. But it's not always given. And I think people people use trust as like a, a shield or like a way to fight back from having to do what they're supposed to do to help the other person. Oh, I don't trust you, so I'm not going to give you 200%. Then why in the hell are we together? If I got to work for years and years and years to get your trust back, why the hell are we even together? Because I'm going to tell you, you know, hey... You can do this, you can be great, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this. 
I'm going to be as affectionate as I can be. Which, me personally, my own, my own self, I have to get better at it. I used to be really, really, you know, affectionate. But over the years, it, it just got drained out of me. So I have to find a way to get it back. But I'm speaking from my own perspective, from my own, um, from what I've already experienced. The support does matter. It does. And black men, when you are being supported, do not take it lightly. If she's telling you she believes in you, then don't sit there and question the hell. Just go do what you set out to do. And make her and your kids proud. Hell, for that matter, if you ain't got a wife and kid, make your damn self proud. Don't keep making excuses about why you can't make it out here. Because America is supposed to be the land of the free and plenty of opportunities. But we know the real story, don't we? We need to rewrite that history. We do. Because I think we waste so much of our own time believing the dumb shit. That we're not as good as somebody else. That we can't go as far as other people unless we have a title in front of it. And for that matter, don't don't continue to settle for the fields that you think are easy or easier to get involved in, i.e. sports, entertainment, um, the military, you know, shit like that. Go to be a doctor. Eight years of studying is worth it, especially if you're convinced you can actually save lives. Be a paramedic. Be a pharmacist. Hell, for that matter, be a damn politician. Just be open and honest about things, even though every single politician has a crooked agenda. But you set the you set the you set the bar to be different. You be different. Don't conform don't confirm to the ways of the world because of what they're telling you they want you to do, or you don't get paid. Because the end, when it's all over, when it's all said and done, and your life is finished, you have to answer for those decisions you made. Whether good or bad, you got to answer for them. So why sit there and dwell on what somebody's not going to do for you when you actually have a God himself that's willing to provide? He opens doors all the time. You just got to go to the right one. And once he's shut the door, you can't open it no more. That's another proven fact that I've dealt with. But it's also giving me key moments to recognize when that door was shut. So I had to continue to move on. So, to all my black men out there, we need you guys to, to take your rifle spot and not be a footnote in history. Don't just wait around for the next great thing to happen. You make that happen. There's so many out there that have so much hidden talent that you allow people to step on it and bury it before you even give it a chance to, to be nourished and to flourish and to let the world see it. And you know the biggest cliche of all when people say, oh, well, that person didn't believe me. That's why I didn't pursue it. That was me. I said that shit. I had to stop that. You know, even if people do not believe in you, still pursue it. You know why? Because once you accomplish it, then those same people will give you the validation that you already told yourself as you was going through that. And you don't have to acknowledge them for it. You can say thank you, but that's all. You ain't got to say, well, I told you I was going to... No, fuck that, dude. It's not that important. That's called being petty. You acknowledge God for giving you that strength to get there, and you move on with that path that he's carved out for you. And don't look to always get a pat on the back because that's not how the, word, the way the world works. It doesn't work that way. No matter what line of work you get in, you're, you're not always going to get a pat or a, notor, a notoriety for doing something. It's just not going to happen. Now, you can set that train yourself, but... For me, I just want us to to be that race that we originally set out to be. 
because the blueprint is in the slavery times how they persevered how they continue to move on even in the odds of death and criticism and constant turmoil they they took more abuse and fearful tax than any other placement in history and yet they always saw the brighter side of life I, don't, I can't say they never complained because I don't know but I can say that they always found a way to get to the next day even after being beaten probably starved to death hung sometimes it didn't matter they, they saw the prize ahead that's what kept them singing those songs and hell doing jobs that I know no other person on this planet would be doing today would not be doing it but they did it then and it was a standard that I think we fell away from because of being prideful or because oh well you know you're not um, you're not being paid what you think you should be paid. Well, if you work at McDonald's, I mean, come on. Like, you're not going to get paid that much regardless of what you think you deserve or not. You're just not. So in order to avoid that situation, not talking about McDonald's, but to avoid, to, to avoid that situation altogether, get yourself some type of, you know, certification or something to fall back on. Just in case you don't decide to follow your gift or your dreams or whatever. Then do that. You know, don't don't just sit around and make excuses or try to say, you know, I'm going to depend on the government because that's my only means of making it. Bullshit. It's not. And trust me, they're concocting more ways to get rid of us, to eliminate us out of the picture. So let's not help them by erasing ourselves. Because I do believe that our greatest gift is our presence of mind, is our ability to overcome. And it has nothing to do with what we've done in the media, on courts, on football fields, and like that. It's always up here. If they could take this, they beat you. That's what made Michael Mix and people like him very very scary they couldn't touch this can't take this they can take all this they want they can they can do whatever they want to do here but as long as they don't touch this you, you're beating them that's the only game they play that's the only one they know how to play to beat us because physically you got an upper hand but up here they know you're handicapped because you've been programmed to be so it's a sad reality, but it's the truth. So, my advice, black men, is to set a different standard. And stop settling when you could be the foundation for others to build on. Because Barack was great, but he won't be the last president that we have. Assuming somebody else gets that fire to do so. He won't be the last. So don't let this action or these things that have been happening go in vain. Alright y'all, take it easy.